Welcome, Moho Animators. I was recently asked how I made this Sea Life animation, and so in this video, I'm going to explain step by step how I created this animation and how you can create Sea Life videos as well. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so I can keep bringing you these tutorials. Let's get started. As you can see, there's quite a few layers in this animation, so the first step is going to be to create the background and other scenery items. Let's start with the ocean background layer. Using the Draw Shape tool, construct your background and pick the color that you want it to be. To achieve the effect that the water is brighter where the sunlight enters the water, I used the Color Points tool. You can select the point on the background shape where your imaginary light source originates. I used the upper left corner point. Once the point is selected, click on the Color Point tool and then click on the Color Swatch. From here you can select the color that you want that particular area of the background shape to be. In this case, I chose white since the light will be entering the ocean scene at this corner. Adjust the color of the other points as needed. When you are finished, you should see a background that has a light source in the corner and gradually fades to the color of the ocean. The other background items include the ocean floor, plants, and rays of animated light. Starting with the light rays, draw several white triangle wedges that originate at the light source and expand as they move away from the light source. To enhance the animated light, you can divide the wedges up on separate layers. I chose to put two wedges on each layer using four layers. This adds more variability to the animation and provides a sense of depth perception with the light effect. You can also use a soft edge style effect on your wedge shapes so that the edges of your light rays fade into the blue background. Make sure to group your light ray layers into one folder. Behind the light layers, add another background layer that will serve only as a filter for making distant objects less visible. You can simply duplicate the background layer that you already made. Next, animate your light rays. The easiest way to do this is to select each layer and move the origin to the light source in the upper left corner using the Set Origin tool. This allows you to pivot the layer at the light source. As you can see, the light rays pivot across the ocean background. To enhance the effect, use point animation to expand and contract the width of the rays as they pass across the scene. Next, animate the opacity of each light ray layer so that the rays are fully transparent at the beginning and end of their movement and about 40 or 50% visible in the middle of their movement. Once you have animated one entire pivoting motion, add a cycle keyframe on the timeline so the light effect continues throughout the entire project. This completes the background. The next step in the project is to add the remaining scenery items. Starting with the ocean floor, draw a shape for each foreground layer. I made three foreground layers, but you can make as many or as few as you want. So as you can see in this animation, there are three mountains or hills that make up the ocean floor. Decorate each layer with any ocean artwork of your choice, including plants, shells, rocks, or other items. You can draw these items, or to save time, you can import an image texture. I used a combination of both of these methods. I imported an image texture using the fill effects in the style window. This is a great feature in Moho that allows you to fill your shapes with realistic textures from any image. Simply look for an image on the internet that works for this project. Save the image as a file on your computer. Select the shape that you want to apply the image to. Go to the style window, select effects, image texture, select texture, and then find the picture file that you saved. Next, resize and reorient the image to the shape. Once you've completed your foreground shapes and the items that appear on the foreground, it's time to animate them. First, use point animation to create a swaying effect with the plant items on the ocean floor so they appear to move back and forth with the ocean current. Next, cycle the animation so the plants continue to move throughout the length of the animation. Finally, animate the foreground layers so it appears that we are moving forward in the ocean. The layers will start off in the distance and gradually get bigger as the viewer approaches until the layers drop off at the bottom of the screen. And here is where we will use the filter layer that we made previously. 
To achieve the effect that the distant hills are less visible than the closer hills, and to keep the hills at the correct layer depth, we need to group the foreground layers, the light ray folder, and the filter into one folder. Using a newly created master folder, double click on the layer, go to the depth sorting tab, and click the box that says enable animated layer order. Now you can reorder the layers as the animation progresses by placing the distant foreground behind the light rays and the filter. Animate the opacity of the filter to gradually reveal the distant hill as it moves closer in the ocean. The filter will start as a solid color and become fully transparent as the hill approaches. The scenery is now complete. The next step is to create the characters, which will be fish in this case. In this animation, my fish swims both sideways and forwards, and so to make the fish, we are going to draw a side view of the fish and also a rear view. These views will be embedded in a switch layer so they can be used interchangeably. Draw each view on separate vector layers. Once both fish perspectives have been drawn, change the colors of your fish parts as needed. Or in this case, Use a texture just like we did with the ocean floor. One thing to note if you choose to use a texture with your character shapes is that you will have to add a smart warp mesh layer so that the image being used can be manipulated when the fish bends or moves. Add both of these fish drawings to a separate bone layer. Next, create a switch layer and add both bone layers to this switch layer. Now we are going to make smart bone controls to operate the movement of the fish with both views. Start with the side facing fish. You may have to right click the switch layer to make the side facing fish visible instead of the rear facing fish. Once you have the correct view selected, add a master bone to this bone layer simply for reference. And then add two more bones, one for controlling the front and one for controlling the tail. Select the front bone and in the Actions window, click New Action, or you can go to the Bone menu and select Make Smart Bone Dial. The Action window comes up. Rotate the bone 90 degrees using the Transform tool. Adjust your artwork so that the front of the fish appears to turn towards the viewer or away. Once finished, on the Action Timeline, go to frame 25 or so and rotate the bone to the opposite direction. Adjust the artwork so the front of the fish appears to turn in the opposite direction. Now you can double click back on the main timeline and see how your bone controls work. Complete the same process with the tail of the fish and then do the same thing with the rear facing fish. Once finished, you can now animate your fish on the timeline by operating the control bones and moving the switch layer. The project is nearly done. The last step will be to create some bubble effects. To achieve this, we will use several particle layers. First, let's add some bubbles that come up vertically from some of the plants on the ocean floor. Add a particle layer and then place a vector layer inside the particle folder. Select the vector layer and draw one bubble. Then with the particle layer selected, press play on the timeline and you will see how the bubble is multiplied and how it moves. Double click on the particle layer and go to the particle tab. Adjust the parameters so the bubble multiplies and moves more accurately. For more instruction on particle layers, see my video on animating fire and water. Once your particle layer is operating correctly, you can now animate the particle layer by translating it on the timeline to move with the scene. Use the same process for bubbles that will trail behind the fish. Just make sure the velocity and direction of the bubbles is consistent with the speed of your fish. And that is how you can animate sea life using Moho Animation software. Check out my other tutorial videos and always keep having fun animating.